Welcome to WordWise, where we delve deeply in the Word of God, discover what it means and how to apply it to our lives. Today we're looking at another passage out of the ministry of Jesus, a powerful but familiar passage to many of us. If you've been around church long enough, you've heard this preached, you've heard it taught, and it's an amazing passage. But it's very helpful, and I think today will be a good day to reset, remind ourselves of who Jesus truly was and is, and who he can be for us. For the first time I remember hearing this preached when I was a young pup back in college days, I remember the uh, pastor who was a mentor of mine asking us the question, are you ready for the storm? Are you ready for the storm? And I sort of pridefully said, yes. Turns out the answer should have been no. As always, the storms of life can catch us unawares and we can be overwhelmed by them. And I think the last couple years in our, our lives would testify to that reality. But with Jesus on board and with Jesus in the center of our lives, we can be better prepared to endure whatever storm may come. So read with us Mark 4, verses 35 through 41. Mark 4, 35 through 41. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man, they asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. So the context for this passage is it's early in Jesus' ministry, fairly early, and he's going to be traveling from Capernaum on the Sea of Galilee across the lake to uh, the other side to do some ministry there. This passage is also found in the other synoptic gospels of Luke and Matthew, and it's very similar but Jesus is with, again, his disciples. And I remind you who those disciples were. At least four of them were experienced fishermen in this area. They would have known the Sea of Galilee, known its weather patterns, and known the situations that would happen on the lake. They were experienced fishermen, and they're, they're from this area. And yet, they were not ready for the storm. Yet, they were not ready for the storm. Or better, I should say, their reactions indicated they're not ready for the storm. They weren't uh, really prepared for what happened. They're in the, traveling across the lake. Jesus has been doing some intense ministry. He's tired. He's in his human form. He gets tired. Remember that. Fully human, he gets tired. Yes, he's fully God at the same time, but his fully human side, he had been exerting quite a bit of energy, doing ministry, healing, teaching just previous to this, and now he's tired. So... He's not the one in charge of the boat. The fishermen are. His disciples are. So I love the fact that Jesus takes a nap. In all three gospel accounts of this, in Mark, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's the same thing. He's sleeping. He's taking a nap. He's comfortably resting in the boat. Think about that. As the storm picks up, there would not have been a storm when they started out, but as they traveled, the storm would have come up. And storms can come up quite quickly in that area. But again, experienced fishermen should have been ready for that. But the storm may have been so intense and so sudden that it even caught them unawares. But yet, Jesus continues to sleep. Because when he's trusting in his Father's plan, when he's trusting in his Father's will, he knows that it's not going to matter what happens. The circumstances, the storms are not going to affect him. The joy of the Lord is deep in him. He is strong in God's presence. And he knows that the storm is irrelevant in a lot of ways. So he continues to, to sleep. He's not uh, oblivious. He's just asleep where he needs to rest, and he is trusting in God the Father and God the Spirit as he's fully resting in them as well. But the disciples, they're not quite as calm, as you notice. They weren't ready to handle this, and so they are freaking out. They are really terrified, and probably rightfully so. So often in life, we get caught unawares, and there are some strong emotions that we need to handle because we're afraid, we're anxious, we're upset. In some cases, those are legitimate fears. Other times, they're uh, irrational. We need to examine why are we afraid. In this situation, they were actually in danger. Most likely, even as experienced fishermen, they knew how much danger they were in, and they are very afraid. They wake Jesus up. They shout for him to wake up. I imagine they were pretty annoyed with him for sleeping through this time, and you kind of get that sense of, don't you care about us? We're about to die and you are still sleeping? Don't you care about us? Don't you even want to help out? I don't think they knew who he is yet in his identity, his true identity. They're still learning that, but they still want him to help out and at least be awake for this situation. 
So they wake him up with their shouts and they reach out to him and they basically say, can't you do something about this? And Jesus, being Jesus, fully man as well as fully God, is able to, in his divine connection here, calm the wind and the waves. Notice he rebukes them. He tells them to cut it out. He basically just yells at them. Now, that's not him being cranky after he wakes up from a nap. That would be me being fully human in my uh, humanness. I'm pretty cranky after a nap. That's not what Jesus is exhibiting here. He's exhibiting power. The word of the Lord is enough to still creation. The authority of God is enough to calm the wind and the waves. And it happens instantaneously. It happens very quickly. And a calm that is so shocking and surprising comes And they weren't ready for that either. The disciples weren't ready for the storm and they weren't ready for the calm either. They were caught unawares by both. And they were, uh, the scripture tells us, terrified in a different way now. They're they're marveling, they're in awe, they're in reverence, yes. But that's taking the form of fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord, this deep reverence and awe as they realize this is not just a good teacher. This is not someone who is not just a rabbi who knows a lot. They should have realized by now they will continue to struggle with this truth that Jesus is Messiah, that he is the Son of God. He's already cast out demons and healed people and done miraculous things, and a lot more is to come. But this particular miracle is pretty significant for them. For no one can calm a storm. No human can exert such instant authority. That is only a divine power, and that's only the Son of God able to do that. So he's revealing his identity to them And I love their response because they're struggling with it, but they're asking a question we all have to answer at some point. Who is this? Who is this man that can exert such authority over the wind and the waves that they, uh, creation listens to him and responds to him instantaneously? Who is this? Who is Jesus? That's a question they had to answer. They continue to wrestle with it for, for years before they fully understand and live out the reality of their response. It's a question we have to wrestle with too. Who is Jesus? And are we willing to accept who he says he is and who the scriptures tell us he is and live accordingly, respond accordingly? He's not just the Son of God and the Lord of creation. He's Lord of our lives. He's the source of salvation. And he should be someone and is someone that we must understand is pretty significant in our lives. Are we willing to follow and are we willing to do what he tells us to do and live our lives accordingly? So brothers and sisters, as you prepare for the storms of life, whether you're ready or not, they're coming. As you know, the storms of life are going to hit, whether you are ready or not, whether you're prepared or not. So I encourage you to examine the scriptures, to study the scriptures, to become word wise, so that when the storms of life come, you're ready to know that Jesus is with you, that you have no reason to fear, that you have the Lord of creation in your corner advocating for you, and able to be all that you need in that situation. For if God is with us, who can be against us? Thanks for joining us today.